Should you be using snowshoes or skis? A great debate when it comes to winter backcountry. I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV, but before we get into the video, please like the video and subscribe to our channel here. Help us share this content with the greater world of outdoor enthusiasts such as yourself. When it comes to winter backpacking and cross-country travel in the winter when the snows are deep, sometimes just using your feet ain't gonna cut it. And so there's really two major forms of travel, and that's snowshoes and skis. I'm gonna be breaking it down and what give you my best thoughts on what I like to use to help, uh, to help prepare you for your upcoming trips. Okay, let's start with snowshoes. Snowshoes have been around for a long, long time. They haven't always looked quite this fancy though, but snowshoes have done uh, an incredible job of really allowing people to travel in the snow when the snows get, you know, waist deep or something like that, where it's just way too difficult to, to plow your way through and be stepping through. The merits of these is that, relatively cheap compared to a ski setup. You don't necessarily need a whole bunch of extra gear. They can attach right to your normal hiking boots. And the skill level required on these is very low. You can be of average fitness and general movement capabilities and snowshoes will be just fine. There's no real learning curve. You just strap them on and you can go. Downside is that the effort is much higher on snowshoes over skis. If you have to go more than say two miles on snowshoes, that can feel like you're in for quite an expedition. I think there can be a little bit of a misconception about the effectiveness of snowshoes. They totally work and they do keep you afloat. However, you're not gonna be like Legolas the elf just waltzing across deep powder as if it's nothing. You still tend to sink in quite a bit, especially if you've got a big backpack with weight on you, you're going to be driving into that powder quite a bit. Sometimes, depending on snow conditions, that might just be shin deep, but it still also can be knee deep or even a little bit deeper. It'll keep you afloat, but these aren't magical. These are not going to keep it effortless. So it can still be kind of a pain if you're relying on these and you think it's gonna be really easy. I would say if you're going to be using snowshoes, you gotta keep your trip lengths to be much shorter, much shorter, like not more than say three miles. Doing more than three miles on snowshoes in deep snow is going to be completely exhausting. Tr like, trust me, it is. it can be not fun. So, however, if you are doing short trips, these things are magical, they make it easy, and you can have a lot of fun, and they're not that expensive. I think some snowshoes, these are on the expensive end at I think like $120. So I believe that you can get some really reasonable ones for, for not too much coin, like maybe say $80 or so. I'm not super up to date on snowshoe purchases, so I may be wrong, you may have to fat, fact check that one for me, but this is going to be much less of a, an investment to get into than skis. So if you're unfamiliar with skis as a form of travel across country and not just downhill at your local ski hill, uh, there are touring setups. This would be an alpine touring setup. There's also more like cross country or Nordic skiing. That can be a great efficient way to make long distances feel much, much easier. Now the difference between this and say your typical downhill ski is that the heel can unlock. This is a big kind of more bulky base plate that's not uh, super, super expensive. These bindings are a little bit cheaper, but that also then keeps the cost down much more nicely. These are actually surprisingly easy to use. I know that it can be, it can look really intimidating. It can look like you have to be a really accomplished skier when in fact you can be a beginning skier and these will be just fine. Now, if you're talking about starting to actually backcountry ski, then obviously your skill level and other things such as avalanche safety are gonna come into play. But if you've got five feet of snow on the ground and you just need to cover 10 miles, snowshoes are gonna be actually much more difficult than skis. So obviously the con is that 
these setups can cost quite a bit more money than your snowshoes. The, the positive side is that actually using them is way easier, much more effortless. You can glide across and you can almost like skate across the snow in a way that's just literally impossible with snowshoes. So this is a great solution for even backpacking trips. You can totally just have your backpack on and be skiing across uh, a big open landscape or say you're in Sweden or wherever you might be, even here in Arizona, you can still use skis to get you where you need to go. So if I'm making my choice, if I'm doing short distances, hey, you're great with snowshoes. If you're doing long distances, skis are gonna be the way to go. I hope that helps you make your decision. And of course you can always just trudge through in your boots, but Again, if the snow is deep, it's gonna be really hard. So use one of these uh, forms of assistance for winter backcountry travel, and uh, I think you'll actually have quite a bit of fun out there. The snow's coming down pretty good. I'm feeling happy out here. I might have to go for a little ski myself. So if you do think I missed something, please hit me up in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. What's your choice? Are you a snowshoer or are you a skier? Let me know in the comments below and uh, I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Thanks so much for sticking around. Uh, I hope you found that helpful. I'm Eric Hansen. I'll ski you later. <laughs>